Hi guys, it's Ola and today I'm going to show you in detail how to prepare a file to upload to Maker.io. So I'm working in Photoshop, but you don't have to work in Photoshop. You just need a program that can export a PSD or also known as a Photoshop file. And I believe there are shareware free programs out there that can do this. So step one, of course, is going to be create your assets. Uh, so I can't really guide you too much there, but just keep everything on a separate layer. If in doubt, keep it on a separate layer. You can always flatten later, but you can't really do the reverse. The first maker formatting tip is if you have something just on a layer, for example, Bella here, and she is not in a folder, there are no labels and she's visible then how that will behave in the game is she will just be always visible. So for example, here her arm is sort of flying above her body and her body, they're not in any folders, they have no special labels, they're visible to start, so in the game they will simply be always visible. So the first label we are going to learn about is the fixed label and how you do it is on the layer or folder you say open square bracket f-i-x-e-d close square bracket, for example, uh, here. Background. Now what you put outside of square brackets doesn't matter. The game doesn't care. No one will see it. It's just for your own labeling. For example, here I wrote background, so I can easily see it says background. But what matters, between the square brackets, I wrote fixed. What fixed is, is a behavior that one of the things in the folder must always be visible. So in this case, it's a background. We want at least one background to always be visible. We never allow this and we do not allow mixing and matching of backgrounds. I mean, they just, in this case, they just cover each other up, but you know what I mean? So for backgrounds, what you'd most likely do is pick one. For example, I might want the game to start with the harp. So I will leave this layer as visible and the other layers as invisible. And then when the game starts up, it will always start with this background first. But I want to show you guys something really cool that I'm excited about. Uh, my games are known for their diversity. And on Maker, you can make diverse games too. For example, if you have something like this hair, and it says fixed, but you don't make any layer visible, so it's fixed. So the game knows that at least one must be visible, but you didn't tell it which one guess what it'll do? It'll actually randomize at the start. So this is great for, for example, in this game, Bella only has one skin tone because she is a specific character, but in a character maker, you might have a folder called skin tones and you might have, you know, five skin tones and you make none of them visible to start and the folder is labeled fixed. The game will pick each time it starts up a random one. So this is great for uh, eye shapes and eye colors, nose shapes, lips, uh, skin tones, of course. Okay, the next label is called optional. Optional, square brackets. And where this is used is, for example, here I have necklaces. And I put optional. And what this means is that she could have no necklace, and she will, because none are visible, she will start with no necklace. But the player can put a necklace. But if they choose the next necklace, the first one will disappear only one optional item at a time, but it's optional, meaning none is also acceptable. And if you pick one to start with, it will be visible when the game starts. Or if you pick none, for most optional things, you usually want none because it's something the player will add later. Similar to optional, the next label is called mixed. And you could probably figure out what this is going to do. I don't have any in this game, but I could easily say make the headdresses instead of optional mixed. And what that would do is the player could pick one headdress and if they click on the next one, the first one will still be visible. So you can they can mix and match them. This is good, for example, if you have bangles and necklaces and headdresses all in one folder and then you want the player to kind of mix. If you have a lot of random jewelry that it's hard to put in the category, you could put it here. The next label is called Color Picker and we have spelled color the American way. You're welcome. So where you use this, for example, here I have somewhere hair. Okay, the hair folder. And each hairstyle has five different colors. So you see in the other folders, for example, the necklaces, there's only one version of each necklace, so it's on a layer, a bunch of layers in a folder. But for the hair, because they have different options, we have the colors in a folder and then the folders in the folder. It's a bit more nested. So the hair is fixed. There's always going to be one visible. 
and then each hairstyle is a folder and you can see each item that says color picker in the folder and each color is now going to yield a color button so so I'll just show you that in action on another game. For example, the Aozai Maker, you can click here and then a paintbrush shows up and the user can click and it will show them different color options that they can click on. And you decide what color this button will be. And how you do that is you label the layer with the hex code, the color code. So for example, in Photoshop, here's a hairstyle. It actually has technically many colors, but I will go and click on my color and you know pick a color that's representative of the whole thing you know if I click the deep shadow that might look a bit too dark if I click the highlight it'll probably be pure white so somewhere in here it looks like there's a pretty representative color and you copy the hex code if you're doing it this way in Photoshop note that does not copy the hashtag so you have to copy it and then if you paste it you have to just add the hashtag there and I just change the color that the button's going to be. And you do this for every color and then you do this for every style. Okay now we're getting into the really fun stuff. There is something called Enable Color Global. Okay again color spelled the American way and what this does is we have it on the hair you see hair fixed enable color global. This means that when the player changes the color of one of the styles all the others will change as well so I'll show you how this looks on a game I think this one's set to that too so here we have a hairstyle and we change it to the reddish tone and you see all the other hairs also change to the reddish tone so this is something you obviously only want to do if all the items in the folder have the exact same colors enable color global is good for hair styles if you have the same hair color options it's good for eye color too it's nice if the user picks an eye color that then they can focus on the eye shape and all the eyes are set all right now we're getting into the really crazy stuff so i introduce you to ref and mirror and what ref and mirror do is they can link different layers together but they always need to have the same name okay fine be on a separate line if you really want to okay ref and mirror talk to each other so how does this what does that mean so here you see we have a glove where's the other glove one glove is under the body one is above the body so I have to split them but I want the game to toggle both gloves at the same time because we don't want to get too crazy there were a lot of rules in the in the Regency period here the glove on the right is going to be what shows up in the menu and so it has a color picker and then it says ref glove and we're making reference to the glove this is the reference layer and then on the bottom it's like playing Marco Polo this one also says color picker because it every color picker has to have a color picker label even if it's the one being referenced and it, then it also says mirror glove so the program knows that this is the reference point and anything else that says mirror it will link to it and they will be toggled on and off together okay so for example to show you this live you can see in the hat section if you click on this hat there's a portion that's in front of the head and there's a portion that's behind the head and it toggles them together because there's a ref and mirror in action in the back and so this is good for yes hats uh, cloaks capes uh, hairstyles this is very important actually in the Bella game it doesn't use it but most hairs do I believe there's a ref and mirror in action here too so you can have the hair in the front and the hair in the back and what's really important to know that uh, the system is quite powerful you can have more than one mirror so for example here all, all the red layers are parts of coats and here we have a coat it has a color picker uh, the coats are optional and it has a ref this is Charlotte's coat the character Charlotte and now we also have a mirror to it up here because it has the arm that has to sit in front of everything and we also have a mirror to it down below because there's an arm below everything so uh, here this code has one ref and two mirrors you can keep adding as many mirrors as you need so I'll show you an example of some rearranging I'm gonna do for example the glove I had it here is a single item 
We should put this in the folder. And I had the three variations as color buttons. But when you have something like a very small category of just one item, you don't really have to use the color buttons because the user will click on the glove and there will just be one button with one glove and they have to go over here and click on the three buttons. It's actually easier to simply make this optional. But then what has to happen is now the ref can't be down here. Uh, white, we need a ref glove one. What is this? Black. And again, what I'm writing outside of the brackets does not matter. I'm just making sure I don't have a hex code to not confuse myself. Ref glove two. White, uh, ref glove three. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other glove folder. I'm going to convert it. It's not going to be a color picker anymore. It doesn't actually, because this is just going to contain mirrors, it doesn't have to have any labels up here. And then off white mirror, glove one, glove two. Okay, so now the menu will show three gloves. As It kind of makes it almost look like you have more stuff than you really do, because instead of one item with three colors, ooh, three items in here. When you have basically finished the artwork, what you want to do is make icons. And how I do that is I take a folder. Each folder should have its own icon. I already have one. We'll just pretend I don't. And you can make it really any size that you want, but it'll be forced into a square box. So it makes sense to start with a square. I'm just holding down shift. Somewhere between 50 and 100 pixels. is oh, hundreds maybe a bit excessive. Let's go with, I don't know, 70. Okay. I will fill it with a color. And what I then do is I make a new layer, hold down the Alt key, press here, and then I will take one of the items that's in the folder. How about some black shoes? Duplicate it. Put it here so now it's it's masked underneath. Just move it up. Control T to transform and shrink it. Ooh, a shoe button. What I do is I have all this in a folder called icon. Hey, guess what? Icon is what you put on the layer that you want to be your icon. Flatten the whole thing. So now this folder has an icon and the icon that you're making is what shows up here. So see, you can make little rounded edges like I did and it's kind of cute. Or you can make them square or you can make them circle. Uh, but of course, the more you constrict the shape, the less room there is for the item to show up. So the next step, and this is very important, is to add your watermark. See down here, it says Doll Divine. Try to make your watermark in a way that enhances the image, makes it look more, you know, almost expensive. Like, oh, this is a beautiful brand name. This makes my image complete and not like something you're shoving upon people that they would want to crop out. Make it nice, make it work, make it complement the image. And then people are more likely to, to use it. Make it legible. Think if someone sees this watermark, will they know how to find me? Will they know who I am? Something you don't want to forget to do is at the very end when you're all ready to go, select the whole thing and go image crop. And what this does is it'll delete anything that might be outside the sides that you don't see because you don't see it. But when you put into maker, maker sees everything. So you want to make sure there's nothing outside or else the buttons will be wonky. Things won't fit quite right in the menu. And plus this makes your file size smaller. And then the last thing you do is make sure your file will be okay for upload. So check the image size. And I believe right now I'm recommending a size height of 600 to 1200 pixels. And the width should be smaller than the height port or the same portrait mode or square, no landscape. And if you have to shrink it, you can change it here. Image size, you know, if it was, and the last thing you want to do is find your file and look at the size, how many megabytes, this is 10 megabytes. That's not too big. I'm way below the threshold. I think the threshold is somewhere around 50 or 60 megabytes right now. Let's try uploading this file. Click here to create a new game. I'm already logged in, obviously. Okay, the program is analyzing the file. And oh, look at that. Of course, I have issues. Now, don't worry, this even happens to me. So um, now you have to work through them. So you look and read them for hints. Glove right icon cannot be found. Let's see, what are they talking about? Glove right. Okay, at some point my icon was deleted. So I'll make a new one. Or maybe I never did have an icon for the glove. I can't remember. But this is why uh, the system is great. It tells you what you forgot about. Okay, icon is there. What's next? Can't load image from layer 64. 
Ooh. Let's move on to something else. Invalid RGB code color picker long, 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 long. Something is something's wrong with my labeling, I'm sure. What's long? Is that a hair thing? Long. Okay. I found a layer that says long. Oh, okay. There you go. So when it's a color picker, okay, I guess I lied. I said that nothing matters outside of brackets, but if it's a color picker, it just wants the hex code and nothing else. Okay, what's next? So that, that hopefully that takes care of all of those. I don't know what this is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hope for the best because this is the, be the the great thing, you know, you can keep trying and it's okay. Try again. Save the file. Try again. See, it even says it on the button. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, I guess I have to figure out what this issue is. Can't load image from layer 189. So we are, I think we are looking for layer. Oh, it's a layer with, I think, but there's two quotation marks here. I think it's a layer without a, a label, perhaps. What did I do? So now it's a matter of going folder by folder. Oh. I didn't flatten this icon. That would have caused an error for sure. I didn't flatten the, the folder. So let's um let's try again. Yeah, why keep why keep working when we maybe we're done, right? Success! Yay! Okay. See? Our ref and mirror is working. The gloves are appearing together. Only one glove can appear at a time. When you test your game, this is a good time to make yourself your thumbnail because it will force you to test your game and also you need to have a thumbnail so this is a great time to do it. And you just save it. Rather than trying to take a screenshot, use the game's own saving feature. Okay, I have my picture and I'm gonna make a new file that's small, about 300 by 300 pixels. And I'm gonna control A to select all, control C to copy, Go over here control V to paste, and I'm gonna make my icon. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm going to enlarge it a bit so it's a bit more focused on Bella. And this could also be a good time to add a watermark to your thumbnail. I already have one here that I pasted from another file. I'm just going to tweak the color to sort of match this particular game. Ooh, what should we do? So many choices. Maybe like a dark turquoise like she has in the hat. I can't actually send a Photoshop file, so then I save as a JPEG. And I will make it max quality because the, the maker will compress it for you. So you start with the highest quality you can. Okay, so let's say we're happy with the game. We continue. Add a thumbnail. There it is. We already optimized this, so we want to take the full thing. Yay! And obviously write in your name, description. Okay, and then you put in tags. And tags will help people find your games. And it just helps organize them in the right categories on the website. So in this case, I would write historical as opposed to say fantasy. I would write Europe because that's, this is from a, a, I suppose it spans North America probably as well, but that's the geographical region that it does represent. I would say Bella, uh, Regency of course, because this is reflective of the Regency period. I like to put things like princess because this is a good game to make a princess with the century. And you can write your name. Okay, upload and publish. Okay, thank you. Your game has been successfully uploaded and awaits moderation. What does that mean? Yeah, and what this does is it just sends it basically to me, uh, and I check it out just to make sure that A, it's playable, that, you know, there's something. It doesn't have to be completely finished. It's okay if it's in progress as long as there is already something to play with. And I just B, check that there's nothing wildly inappropriate, but, you know, I'm pretty chill. And if everyone behaves, we might get rid of moderation altogether, but uh, we're just going to start out this way. Okay, I've moderated my own game, and now you can see it shows up under New Games. There she is. Yay! Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, you can always feel free to email me at ola.regula at gmail.com. And oh yeah, if you want to share your game, the address up here is what you would copy and then paste to show it to all your friends.